I am sure you have understood architecture of RNN through this last video. In this video, let us understand few more details of RNN quickly and then we are going to see why RNN in its native form or in its normal form is not used much in deep learning. Let us see that. So guys, we are going to quickly cover the very important concepts of RNN such as types of RNN and what is the problem with RNN we are going to understand in detail. Okay, and then from that problem, how the new variants of RNN has come into picture that we are going to see as the next steps. Okay, so if we talk of types of RNN, right, then um, I suppose you remember the last architecture that we discussed about the RNN, where we send some input to the RNN, right? We send some input. So let us assume this is our input and then we get some output. Let us assume this is our output and then there is a feedback loop like this, right? So this is the basic RNN structure that we have. Now, from this structure, we can have four different varieties of RNN, okay? So one variety of RNN is known as one-to-one -one RNN. And what is the example of one-to-one -one RNN is? For example, if, if I take an image as input, okay? So suppose my input is an image, okay? And my problem is image classification. So what is my input? My input is image and my problem is image classification. So for one input, how many outputs I will get? I will just get one output, okay? So this type of RNN, we can simply, uh, you know, write it like this, one input, okay? Then something happens here and then one output. This is your one-to-one -one kind of RNN. Okay, so we, we must uh, know these varieties because sometimes in interview they may ask you and sometimes if you are preparing for some certification exams or some tests, these kind of questions can be there. Okay, so one to one RNN and then one use case I told you about that. Then other variety of RNN is one to many. Okay, so one to many, which means your input will be only one, but your output can be many. How? For example, if I give my input as an image, okay? So what is my input? My input is an image. And what can be my output? So my output can be multiple things that are present in that image. For example, there can be a bus present. There can be a truck present. There can be a, let's say, bicycle or cycle present. There can be a traffic light, okay? So from one input image, I am getting multiple outputs. This kind of architecture, how it will look like? So there is only one input. From this input, I am generating a output here. And then in the next step or next timestamp, this is again going here and I am generating one more output. It is going to next timestamp and I am generating one more output. Okay. So this kind of architecture that you are seeing here is called one to many architecture. Okay. So this is second type of RNN architecture. Third type of RNN architecture that you must know is known as many to one. Okay, many to one, which means in the input, I will give many things in the input. For example, I will give a sentence. Okay, I will give a sentence and in output, what I want to know is the sentiment of the sentence. Okay, sentiment of the sentence. For example, my sentence can look like movie, movie was not good okay so this is my sen uh, sentence and what output my model should predict my model should say um, you know the sentiment was negative so how many input i'm giving multiple inputs how many output i'm getting only one output so how this architecture will look like so this will be my input then it will move to the next step then it will move to the next step okay so multi multiple inputs i'm giving and i'm just generating one output in the end like this okay so this is what kind of architecture that you are seeing here many to one architecture okay example you have seen already and one more last kind of rnn that you must know is known as many to many okay many to many rnn so what can be one example of many to many rnn for example in input again i can give a sentence okay and in output i can get a sentence maybe a translated version of that sentence for example in the out in the input i can say my name my name is aman okay 
and let's say there is a translator in between okay so let's say there is my model is nothing but a translator so my model is a translator so what i will get i will get the same sentence in some other language how this model will look like this model will take multiple input and it will give you multiple outputs so we will take the input then something happens then output then again next timestamp some input comes some output goes some input comes okay some output comes and so on and so forth okay what kind of architecture this is many to many one use case can be sentence translation okay so these four type of rnn architectures or rnn flavors or varieties you should remember moving on to the next topic of the video that is why it is difficult to um, work with rnn in uh, you know normal tasks or why rnn in its native form is not that popular okay so if you remember guys rnn is internally a deep learning right so if i take a simple model like this right so for example i am creating a model here and i will just put some layers here okay so i will not make all the connections i will just make few connections here and i will try to explain you what is the problem with normal rnn okay so let's say like this like this like this and then like this okay so suppose here there will be a loss function in the end, right? So here there will be a loss function. Based on that, my weight will be optimized, right? So let's call this loss function as L, okay? So L is my loss function. Now, what is the prob What is the objective of my network? The objective of my network is, let's call this weight as W1. There will be W2, W3, W4, like that, right? So the job of my network is to optimize this WN so that this loss can be minimized right that is the simple optimization problem we are solving when we are building a deep learning model right so if i ask you a simple question how would you know how would you know how w1 is related to l okay so for example for decreasing l or for decreasing loss should i increase w1 or should i decrease w1 so my question to you is very simple i want to i will just write here I want to decrease because that's my loss function. Okay. I want to decrease loss. Okay. I want to decrease loss. Okay. And my question is, should I increase or decrease W1? Should I increase or decrease, decrease W1? What should I do? Okay. Now, some of you who is a little bit familiar of the concept of gradient descent will know that the answer of this question comes from derivative. And that is we have to go and simply say derivative of loss with respect to W1. OK, we will see this value and we will decide whether W1 should reduce or W1 should be increased to, uh, you know, get the get the minimum value of loss. But if you see this network, right, the loss is not directly related to W1. Okay, loss is not directly related to W1. Loss is coming to, see, first W1 will go and then one output will come here, right? O1, okay? And then one output will come here, let's say O2. And loss is related to O2. So if I have to find W1, then I have to take the root of loss to O2, loss to O1, and loss to W1, okay? loss to O2, loss to O1, and loss to W1. This is the path we have to take if we have to find this derivative. So this derivative is looking like one simple term, but it will break into three terms, okay? Loss to O2, then O2 to O1, and then O1 to W1. So let me write it here. So this relation you have, this relation you have, this relation also you have, okay? And this relation also you have. Now this, this term that I want to find out, this term that I want to find out to optimize the weight of W1 cannot be directly found out. Rather, these individual terms T1 and T2 and T3 can give me a, uh, can give me combiningly if I multiply these three can give me this term that I want to find out. Okay. Now there is one problem guys. Suppose what if these terms are very, very small in number. 
suppose these terms are very very small in number so if you multiply a small number less than zero decimal number with another number which is less than zero with another number which is less than zero then what happens is this result will become very very low and when this result becomes very very low then this gradient will become very very low and when this gradient becomes very very low then you won't be able to optimize your w1 so how you will optimize your w1 w1 new is equal to w1 old minus eta okay loss by w1 this is the formula through which you will optimize your w1 okay but suppose this term that i am trying to find out here this term itself becomes very very small then what will happen my new w1 and my old w1 will remain same this problem as some of you might be knowing is called vanishing gradient problem and remember here i am talking about only three terms but your deep learnings are not only this much depth right here i am talking about only three levels level one level two level three but it will not be a this kind of model right it will be a deeper model so in that deeper model right these terms will increase if these terms will increase then your numbers will become more small if these numbers become more small then this vanishing gradient problem will come this problem is called vanishing gradient problem okay vanishing gradient problem and there is another sister problem of this known as exploiting gradient problem exploding gradient problem when that happens when these terms become very very large and if you multiply all these terms together then it becomes more large so that is exploiting gradient problem okay so i tried to explain you exploiting gradient problem i'm sorry i tried to explain you in very simple language what is the problem with basic rnn so in basic rnn what you try to do you try to remember what happened previously you try to take that into consideration and then move to the next then move to the next so what happens in that case is you are taking lot of parameters and lot of weights into consideration when you are moving to the next layer that makes the network really really complex and that introduces these two problems so these are the main problems why rnn is not used normally in its native form in general okay and second problem that rnn suffers is rnn is expensive to train okay so why rnn is expensive to train is suppose you have very long sentences that you are working with those long sentences you need to have a deep model deep network and then you need to tweak your parameters optimize your parameters very very nicely otherwise what may happen is you may fall into one of these problems and waste your resources so rnn is not simple to train rnn is expensive to train due to these two reasons right there are other varieties of rnn it's rnn only but there is little tweak that is more used in the real world one is known as lstm and another is known as gru okay these are also rnn but little different from normal rnn i am going to cover these two in my upcoming videos for now just understand in basic rnn there is exploding and vanishing gradient problem and basic rnn is not easy to train it's expensive to train okay i know for many of you this mathematics was not easy to understand hence i am going to write few terms here and i am going to point you to write video to learn these terms remember i i told gradient descent so i will write here gradient descent okay remember i told chain rule maybe i did not say but that that is called chain rule when i broke one derivative into multiple derivative this is called chain rule okay so you should know what is a chain rule so chain rule then gradient descent and then basic maths of neural network basic maths of neural network if you don't know these things very well right then you will struggle to understand anything that i am trying to explain or in the future i will try to explain okay so please learn about gradient descent please learn about maths behind neural network and please learn about chain rule for all these three i have videos at unfold data science go to unfold data science and first video you should watch is components of neural network okay what is a weight what is bias layers and activation function second video you should watch is maths behind neural network okay 
and third video you should watch is gradient descent simple explanation so as you can see more than 150k views is there on this video so gradient descent if you want to understand it's very nice video for you to understand okay so i covered in short what is the problem with rnn and what are the things you should learn to be prepared to learn more things in lstm and gru okay i'll see you all in the next video guys wherever you are stay safe and take care